Good morning, everyone. Hope and pray that we all had a good night's rest and up and ready to start our day and to start it with the Lord and to pray that we will put the Lord in everything that we do. So this morning I'll be continuing with our reading and the title of the reading this morning is A Loving Warning from God, the Third Angel's Message. Let us pray. Great God and our Father, as I'm about to go into this reading, Lord, I pray that the reading will not be heard from me, but from you, O oh God. I pray that someone will come to know you better and that this message will not just stay amongst us as church members, but to go out and reach someone else out there in the world. Bless and keep us now, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the topic again is a loving warning from God, the third angel's message. The Lord expressed his deep concern for sinful human beings through the proclamation of the eternal gospel through his appeal to them to return to him as was seen in the first angel's message and by alerting them about the false gospel of Babylon which was seen in the second angel's message. Now, God go, now God's heart opens up again warning humanity about the fate of those who identify themselves with the dragon hoping that they will listen and choose the loyalty of the Lamb. This message takes us to the final judgment and the resolution of the cosmic conflict through the Lamb. Well, we all have a choice, and the language and the image used in the message of the third angel, which can be seen in Revelation 14, 9 to 11, appears to some to be incompatible with the Christian gospel. So here I'm going to do a reading of the message from the perspective of the sacrificial love of the Lamb will disclose the intent of this message. So there are three steps and the first one is loyalties. The third angel's message focuses on one of the most important questions humans face, and that is, to whom do we owe ultimate loyalty? It implies that there is a conflict and that regardless of our involvement, there are sides to take. Reluctant to choose is a choice of the wrong crowd, and I'll repeat that part. Reluctant to choose is a choice for the wrong crowd. There are only two options, the lamb or the fallen cherub. In this conflict, there is not such a thing as being loyal to ourselves. The concept of loyalty found here is profound, for our character display the identity of the object of our loyalty. This is, what the lo this is what the language of bearing the name and mark of the beast indicate. Loyalty to the fallen cherub leave a visible imprint in our lives. Having the name of the beast means that we have identified ourselves with the agenda and ambition of the fallen cherub, and that means we belong to him. The idea of belonging is clearly expressed through the mark of the beast. A mark of loyalty in the hand and for it is visible to all and reminds others that this person belongs to the fallen cherub. The mark is a symbol of authority, the object of our loyalty. If we examine the history of apostate Christianity, looking for a symbol of authority, that would reveal one's loyalty in the conflict, it is clearly Sunday. The claim to have authority to change the law of God is unsurpassable. The authority of God, who established the seventh-day Sabbath as the day of rest and worship, 
was silenced by the human voice that changed Sabbath to Sunday. The law of God will play a major role in the final conflict. Notice the connection between worship and the mark of the beast in Revelation 14:9, and it says, "If anyone worship the beast and receive the and receive a mark, these two elements are inseparable. Since Sunday is a day of worship, submitting to it is at the same time an act of worship. Two commandments are violated." and that is the first and the fourth. Sunday becomes a counterfeit to the Sabbath, which is a sign of God, which is a sign of God, God's sanctifying authority. So the next um, step we'll be looking at now is titled Wine and Fire. The final fate of the wicked consists of ex- consists in the experience in experiencing the wrath of God here we confront what some would call the difficult topic of the wrath of God John tries to explain what it is using the metaphor the metaphor of wine and fire and brimstone these images are employed in the old testament to describe God's judgment against the enemy the language is symbolic because god's wrath is not literally drinking from a cup in this case what matters is the type of wine the wicked will drink for it expresses the point of the comparison this wine was not mixed with water as the common as the common but its intoxicating power was increased through the use of spices and that can be found also in the book of Revelation Revelation 14 10 the wicked will experience God's wrath unmixed with mercy there will not be room for repentance now repeat that part the wicked will experience the wrath of God on mix with mercy there will be no room for repentance Revelation 22 verse 11 the second metaphor is fire and brimstone the wicked will be tormented with fire and brimstone or with burning brimstone this metaphor compares the experience of God's wrath to the pain one feels when burning brimstone touches our body. God's wrath is a painful experience. The metaphor also builds on the on the fact that on the fact that what is destroyed by fire cannot be recovered. It is destroyed forever. The idea is that the wrath of God will result in the final extinction of the wicked called the second death revelation 26 and 14 the fire is eternal for what it burns eternally destroyed it burns until nothing is left while the wicked are experiencing the second death there is no rest for them so the next step that i'll be looking at is christ's suffering The painful and final death of the wicked is something that we cannot begin to imagine because no one has yet gone through it. The only exception was Jesus Christ and he did it in order for us to escape it. During the final judgment, no one should go through the second death. At least there is no valid reason for this to happen. A Christ-centered view of the final judgment has has to connect it with Christ's judgment on the cross. There he took up himself the judgment of the world, bore the sins of the world as a sacrificial lamb, and drank the cup of God's judgment against sinful humanity. In order, those who place their faith in him as Savior 
to not perish but enjoy eternal life and this is where john 3 16 will come in for god so loved the world that he died for us he gave his only begotten son to die for us on the cross he experienced a baptism of fire and said i am thirsty on the cross the godhead suffered together god suffered with his son as the divine being alone could suffer in order that the world might become reconciled to him the excruciating pain he felt was not so much physical but the inner pain of realizing he was separated from the father matthew 27 verse 1 verse 46 something similar will be the fate of the wicked during the final judgment as they realize that they will be eternally separated from god so in conclusion the conflict is indeed about loyalty the warning from god sounds threatening because of the seriousness of the situations human will face in transparency uncovers a heart in pain for god does not want his creatures to die the language is the language of a sign alerting people to stop because there is a deadly threat ahead of them god knows about this because he and his son experience it on the cross meanwhile we are god's ambassadors inviting people to choose the lamb who reconcile us to god amen and i'll just pray to close dear god and our father we just want to give you thanks lord for all your warnings oh god the first the second and the third angels message oh god you have taken it a step further oh god in showing us how much you love us lord by continuing giving us warning after warning oh god lord i pray that as youths that we will lift up your name O oh god and carry our cross help us to be a light to others help us so that we can help someone along the way i pray that as a church family O oh god we will go out reach others and as youths we will be a light to all the other youths the ones who has who have left the church i pray that we will be able to help them to come back with your strength oh god because we cannot do this on our own bless and keep us today as we go about doing our business i pray that we will put you before in everything that we do and that we will continue to serve not only for the month but for eternity and to bring others to you in Jesus' name I pray.